Hi guys, I'm here to talk to you today about my favorite pens. Now a couple of things to keep in mind, this list is kind of rotating, they're not always the same pens, this is just my current favorite pens right now. Uh, and also for what it's worth, I'm a lefty. However, uh, I'm not a hook lefty, I'm an underwriting lefty. So as far as concerns about like smearing for people who drag their hand over what they've just written, I don't do that so I can't talk to that. And you'll see that. Because uh, what I'll do is I'll take you through my favorite pens and then I'll show you a writing sample of writing with each of them. So, uh, I'm going to break this down into three categories. Gel pens, ballpoint pens, and fountain pens. Because those, those are the ones that I use most of the time. I do have some dip nibs for stuff, but I don't use them regularly. So these are the pens that, I'm, that I've got <laughs> excuse me, in my rotation pretty constantly. Um, so first one, this is a Muji gel pen in 0 0.38. This is the black one, but it comes in a bunch of colors. Uh, it's not a huge range of colors. It's maybe like eight, maybe 10, um, but it's a great pen. It's a solid workhorse pen. You get a good fine line, uh, but not, not super fine, but like fine enough. And this was the pen that got me into fine point pens to begin with, like 10, more, maybe more than 10 years ago, this was the pen that started it all. Um, so, yeah, and of course it's Japanese, because in America we don't, or we didn't historically have access to super fine point pens like, like they use in Japan, so I didn't even know that was a thing. Once I found out it was a thing, it became my thing, and here we all are together partying with fine point pens. So the Muji 0.38 uh, is a classic, it's a capped, I think they have them, that's not going to focus, I think they have them in... Um, retractable as well, but I, I like the cap. I like the feel of the cap one better. Now the design of this pen has changed over the years. This used to have, it used to be a slightly slimmer barrel with like little grippy things. And I really liked that barrel and I don't know why they changed it. And at first I hated this, but I got used to it and, and it's still comfortable to write with. It's just not what I was used to. Uh, so I do like this pen, 10 out of 10, would buy again. For a slightly finer line, the two pens that I tend to turn to, another Muji pen, this is a 0 0.25, and I think it's the same um, gel formulation, it's just a finer point and it's a needle point rather than a conical, uh, and it's got a hex barrel, which is nice because that's easy to grip. Uh, this lays down a really fine line, I love this for like in my planner, when I don't have a whole lot of space, this is great. Another one that I like is the Slissy 0.25. And fun fact, the refills on these are exactly the same shape. And as far as I can tell, they're like exactly the same. It's the same pen, it's the same refill. I don't actually know because this is a Muji and this is a Pentel. I don't know where Muji gets their ink from, uh, but it's worth noting that you can interchange the refills in these pens. So I happen to like this barrel better than this one. This one is okay for like little bits of writing but it's very thin so if you have bigger than a petite hand it's uncomfortable to write with this for a long time this is still slim but it gives you just enough this is kind of like writing with a like with a classic you know Ticonderoga pencil it's kind of got that that hex shape to it it's got a similar um, circumference circumference diameter I forget which one is which anyway feels similar in the hand to a, to a good classic pencil um, but the refills are interchangeable on these so, those are great, but what if I want to write something waterproof or highlighter proof, which is kind of a big deal, because if you like me, not if you like me, but if you, comma, like me, comma, are a fan of, let's say, the Zebra Mild Liners in lots of fun colors, most gel pens do not play nice with these. They will smear the heck out of a lot of pens that are that are pretty common in the planner community and just in general. So, what do you do? You could use a ballpoint, and I will go over again some of my favorite ballpoints with you, but the other thing you can do if you love the gel pen is use the Uniball Signo. This is a classic for a reason. This lays down a really nice fine line. It's a conical tip. They do make the Signos with needle points, but only in the 0 0.38, and this is a 0 0.28, which I believe is the smallest that they make this particular pen. Uh, but this is great. This pen lays down a super fine line. It's great for tiny detail work. It's great for if you you know if you write small, and you tend to have very small loops like in your E's and things. This is this is a really great pen. All right. So those are my favorite gel pens currently. 
Moving on to the ballpoints. Now, Oto makes some really fine, really fine pens, and you'll... <laughs> following in on my whole, it feels like a pencil. There's something about pencils, isn't there? There's just something about the feel of a pencil. But I don't like to write in pencil very often. So, Oto is one of my favorite pen makers. They make a lot of really great pens. This is the same pen in two different colors. This is the Oto Horizon. Um, and this is cool. The mechanism is cool. So you push down to get it to extend. And then there's this little button on the side that you click to get it to come back up. I really like these pens. The one thing I will say for these pens is that the, the, the black concentration on the ink is not ideal. It's not super saturated. It doesn't look like pencil. It's not gray, but you can tell that it's a very fine line. Uh, and it, it'll depend on the kind of paper you're writing on, too. I mean, if you're writing on, like, a glossy receipt paper, it'll look very black. If you're writing on, like, a Tomoe River paper or, uh, like, a like a regular American printer paper, less so. This is another Oto. This is the pencil ball. Oh, and what's the size on these? These originally are a 0 0.7, but I got 0 0.5 refills for them because, again, I like a fine line. I'm not kidding. A 0 0.5 ballpoint is a very fine line. And I'll show you that. Uh, this is also a 05. This came as a 05. This is the pencil ball, so it's actually made to look like a pencil, also by Oto, and that's just a regular retractable. Okay, so those are really cool looking pens. They're beautiful, they feel great in the hand. This one's a little bit kind of like the Slissy, it's not comfortable for long stints because it's so skinny. These feel great in the hand. Uh, and you can tell that I have a thing for yellow that will continue. However, my favorite favorite, favorite ballpoint pen without a doubt. And isn't this always the way you spend tons and tons of money on pens looking for the perfect one. And then for like a buck. Yeah. So this, this is the Miffy Travels pen. It's by, I think it's Donga. Um, it's a Korean. Donga does a bunch of like characters and stuff, but this is Miffy. And some of you probably know Miffy. She's a little bunny. Um, this black ink is so saturated it's like the best and it writes on you know like those transparent or translucent sticky notes um that like all pens just slip right off them you have to write with a sharpie these write on them this is uh i think it's because it's an oil-based ink these are so great so great like these are great and you can get them on ebay you can buy like a box of 12 of them for I don't know, 12 or $14, which I totally did. It's on the way from Seoul because these pens. And fun fact, if you don't love the look of the Miffy um, body, you can actually, hold on, let me just reach over here real quick. You can actually repurpose the refills in different pens that look nicer. So one thing that I will often do, um, when I was in Tokyo, I got, so, Pens are just cooler in Tokyo. They're, they just are, they're just cooler. And there are pens that you can get in Tokyo that you can't get in the States, not, not for love or money. This appears to be one of them. This is a Bic Click Stick. These come in like 20 colors at like Tokyo hands. You can just like, zoink, 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 zoink. And I'm so mad at myself that I didn't buy them in every color. I only got it in like four. I think I got a white, a yellow. No, I didn't even get the white. Oh, I suck, I got the yellow and this like turquoise teal and like a burgundy, which I love them, they're all great, they're beautiful. But I wish I had like the pink one and the white one and like the brown, like just, if you're there, do yourself a favor and buy them all and then buy a second set and send them to me. Cool, okay. So, <laughs> long story short, the refills in here will fit in here. Uh, I think they require a little bit of trimming. I'm just gonna open them up real quick so we can take a look. Do, 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 do. Do. Uh, no, it's totally perfect. It's a totally perfect, it's perfect. The, the, you know what, I'm just gonna try it to show you. So this is the Miffy refill. I'm gonna pop it right in here. Ooh, ooh. Bam, bam. Now, the one thing I will say is that the Miffy refill is a tiny bit like, like maybe one or two millimeters shorter than the, the, the other refill that goes with these. So whereas the other refill is gonna give you like a, a nice long extended point, this one will be hooded a little bit back in the, in the, in the pen. Um, so 
you know, something to think about just in case that bothers you. It actually does bother me, um, but whatever. But yeah, so best ballpoint pen ever. All right, so that's ballpoint pens. Moving on to fountain pens. So one of my very favorite fountain pens, and again with the yellow, is the Pilot Kakuno in Extra Fine. I have two of these. I have this one, and then I have a demonstrator, like a clear one. These are great because they are really an extra fine. They're a great pen to kick around. They're cheap. They're like $12 on jet pens. So they're a really great beginner pen. They're a great learner pen, but they're also comfortable in the hand. I mean, beginner pens tend to be built comfortable because they don't want to scare you away from using the pen with having it suck to, to hold. So they make it comfy, which is great for everybody. Comfortable pens are not just reserved for people who aren't used to using pens. I mean, we all want to be comfortable, right? So. This is a great, great pen, and I love that it's got like little smiley faces on the nib, uh, it's just really cute. It's a workhorse. It lays down a very fine line. I have some of the fine points as well. I think I have a green one and a pink one. Not that the cap color matters, because it's all the same pen. I think the only difference is that like different faces are associated with different colors. Uh, but I don't spend the whole time I'm using this looking at the face on the nib, I'm, I'm writing. Uh, but this is a great option, especially if you're a beginner, but even if you're not, great thing to have in your collection. This is a slightly more expensive pen. I think I paid, I don't know, like 55 bucks for this. This is the Sailor Young Prophet, also an extra fine. I like it uh, because it's got the gold accents. I, te I tend not to like gold, but this pen reminds me of a pen that my grandfather had that I inherited, uh, and you're actually going to see that. Uh, that is what we in the fandom community refer to as my alt. Um, <laughs> but this is a, a good sort of modern day, everyday carry. Like it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice pen, it's a solid pen, it, it's lightweight, um, but it feels good in the hand and it's easy to write with. So yeah, there's that. The one thing about this is that it doesn't take an international standard cartridge, Sailor has its own thing going on so you would have to buy special cartridges or if you're like me use up the cartridge and then just use an eyedropper and fill it with whatever ink you want to put in there all right so those are my two favorite fountain pens right now uh i do have a pilot prera coming but it's not going to be here until a couple of days from now and i wanted to make this video while i had a good chunk of time to do it because i'm not sure when i'm going to have another chance so more to come on how i feel about the prera and yes it's yellow. And speaking of yellow, let's talk about our honorable mention fountain pens. This is, as many of you will recognize, a Lamy Safari. Now, this is a great, again, another pen that feels great in the hand. It's great to write with. The nibs on these are interesting because they kind of slide off. They are changeable, uh, but they're weird. And you never want to pull the feed out of these, ever, ever, because they're impossible to put back properly. It's not actually true, you can and I have, but it sucked, let me just tell you right now. It was terrible, zero out of 10, never do that again. However, hold that thought. The other honorable mention for fountain pens goes to the Cueco Brass Sport. Clip doesn't come with it, it's something that you can buy additionally. This is a cool pen, it's a great compact, I mean it's brass, so it's heavy. Uh, it's a great sort of pocket pen. These are, these are diesel, I mean these pens outlast. Um, and when it's posted, it's a little more normal pen length. Again, if you have huge hands, maybe not comfortable, uh, but good to write with. Heavy, because it's brass, the plastic ones are lighter. Um, and if you want to change out the nib on these guys, the whole nib and feed is like a single thing, so you wouldn't want to take the nib out, you want to take the whole. And um, there's all kinds of tutorials online to show you how to do that. The problem with these two pens is that even though they are both extra fine, it's a European extra fine. A Japanese extra fine and a European extra fine are not the same extra fine. Some of you already know this, some of you might not, but if you want extra fine that's like a super actual really extra fine line, go with the Japanese. If extra fine to you means similar to a medium ballpoint, these are fine. Um, but yeah, that's the problem with these. This one, when I actually ordered this, I got it from Jet Pens, and those guys are terrific. Uh, but when I got it, 
It had an extra fine nib on it, but it was writing like a medium. I mean, I felt like I was writing with a Sharpie. And I actually, and, and, but the problem is that once you use a pen, once you use a fountain pen that you buy from Jet Pens, you can't return it. So I was stuck with a pen that I was like, well, I'm never gonna use this because I feel like I'm writing with a marker. So I emailed them and I said, listen, you know, I, I, I used this pen. I want to return it, but I know that I can't because I've already used it, but it writes like a marker. You know, can you, is there, what, what can we do? You know, can I get a partial refund or whatever? And they said, well, how about if we send you a replacement nib and we'll test it to make sure that it really is extra fine. So they did and I got it. And now it's the dreamiest a Koiko can be. As far as I'm concerned, it's, I mean, it's still not a Japanese extra fine, but it is, a, it, it is definitely a, a fine line. Um, so the other kind of fountain pen that I like is specifically for a calligraphy pen. And for those of you who may have gotten letters from me or seen stuff on my Instagram, whenever I'm writing super fancy, it's usually with one of these. Um, this is a Jinhao X750. And I have hacked it with a Zebra G nib. So this is not the nib that it comes with. It comes with some garbage medium nib. I mean, the nib is fine, but I'm not, I never want to see a medium nib in my house ever. Unless I have a guest who uses them, that's fine. But in my collection, no. Um, so this is a Zebra G nib, and I think these are typically used for manga, but it's a flex nib. So you get, you get a lot of thins and thicks. And this is nice uh, because with the point, it works even for a lefty. Because a lot of times calligraphy the angle of how to hold a calligraphy pen, how to do, how to make all those lines, that's all made for right-handers. So lefties can do calligraphy, but we have to do a lot more like self-teaching and adjustment. Um, but this pen kind of, is it, it's, it makes it easy because you can take this on the go. You don't have to bring a dip pen in your bottle of ink. It's all right in here. So it's worth, and if you have a, a paper towel or like one of those, um, rubbery jar openers. If you want to change out the, the nibs on these, you pull and you never want to pull sideways. You never want to grab the sides of this because you can damage the, the tines in the feed. You want to grab it like this, top and bottom, and you can just grab a paper. Like people will say, oh, use pliers and, and a paper towel. You don't even need pliers. You can just yank these out either with your bare hands if it's brand new or with a paper towel to catch the ink if, if you know there has been ink in it. The whole thing comes out um, and then you line it. There's a certain way to line up the, the nib so that it works with the feed. And I have a video on how to do that, which I can link, uh, but it's also on my channel. So these are great for on the go. And I've got, I've got like eight of this pen in different colors. Cause I like to have different colored inks to do that with. Okay. So now for my absolute number one, ultimate, ultimate favorite pen of all time. It's this. And it's no surprise that this is one of the probably slightly more expensive pens. Um, but this is one that I inherited. This belonged to my grandfather. So this is a circa 19, late 60s, early 70s uh, pen. It's a fountain pen. This is a Mont Blanc. So right there, you know, that name carries some clout for good reason. I love this pen. Now the interesting thing about this pen, it is a piston fill mechanism. So you can unscrew the top here, but look what happens whoops at some point the mechanism in here the screw that that connects this part to the actual piston broke so this pen can't be filled who hits however <laughs> it works really well as a dip pen and because it's a fountain pen with an internal reservoir unlike a dip pen where the only thing that's holding the ink is the nib this will suck up just a little bit of ink. I mean, it's never gonna fill because there's no pressure. Um, and I honestly wouldn't wanna fill it because it's compromised, so I, I'd feel weird. Um, but it works great as a dip pen. And I can actually write an entire page, an entire A5 slim page on one dip. So this, is, this whole page was written on one dip with this pen, which is pretty cool, right? Um, plus, it was my grandfather's, so there's that element of like nostalgia. It's beautifully, beautifully designed. It writes in a slightly broader line than the typical extra finds I like. The upsides of that are that you get really good shading and it's it feels so good. Like there's something about this nib that is buttery smooth. And this is the original nib that the pen has had since 
the late sixties, early seventies. So that's what, like, let's say it's let's say nineteen seventy. That's a long time ago. I mean, I'm not good at doing math. I don't want to do it on camera and mess it up. But that's a long time ago. That's like a, a few decades. Still writes like butter. It's amazing. So uh, this is the Mont Blanc. I think it's the Sailor Six Twenty. I think. Um, that's what the cap says, but I don't know if this cap went with this pen originally. I think they do, because the lacquer is the same and the silver band here matches the silver stuff here. It always threw me off because the nib is gold, uh, but the, the accent here is silver and the stuff on the cap is silver. So I'm, I'm guessing that this is the Sailor 620. Um, but I love this pen. And if I could get this pen brand new, I probably would, except that it's super expensive. And I mean, the cap is cracked. Like, this, this is... This pen has seen some days, but it still writes like a dream as long as you're willing to dip in ink and, you know, so it's not one that I can take around with me because it's not, you know, the olden days where you can just bring bottles of ink around and everybody's like, oh yeah, cool. And not that anybody would mind. I mean, honestly, people would be like, oh wow, there goes that quirky Leela again. She sure is a writer. Like, probably no one would even care, but I, whatever. So this is a terrific pen, my absolute ultimate favorite of all time. So. I'm going to show you some writing samples of how all of these pens write so you can kind of see them one by one. So let's go to the desk.
So those are my favorite pens. I hope that you guys uh, either had fun or found something useful or both. I love helping out. I love sharing this stuff with you guys. Um, and I'd love to know what your favorite pens are. So, you know, drop me a comment, let me know. Let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future. If, if you've used any of these pens, if you like them, don't like them. What kind of pens do you recommend? I mean, I mentioned I'm getting a Prera. I've got Twisby Ecos. I've got all kinds of Lamies. I've got like, whatever. But you know, if there's pens that you think I would might want to try, let me know. I'll put them on my list. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you again soon. Bye.